folks. Uh, welcome to This is Public Broadcasting. I'm your host, Captain Rutledge, and uh, sorry I can't talk too much right now. Uh, CJ's practicing his art skills. How's it coming over there? Uh, he'll be done in a moment. In the meantime, he'll have to make do with a voiceover. Ever since mankind emerged from caves, people have been expressing themselves through painting. Whether it be watercolor or oil, fresco or tempera, canvas or wood. There have been several great masters. Leonardo da Vinci, Rembrandt, Francisco Goya, Claude Monet, the list goes on. However, in order to master painting, one must first have a great painting teacher. Uh, can I move now? <sighs> Thanks. Enter Bob Ross and the joy of painting. Hi, I'm Bob Ross. From 1983 to 1994, art teacher Bob Ross hosted the joy of painting, distributed by American Public Television and shown on PBS stations across the United States. Every episode involved Bob Ross demonstrating various oil painting techniques in real time, allowing viewers to follow along at home and get inspiration for future artwork. Of course, in order to truly appreciate the program, we must first take a look at the man behind the show, the soft voice swell guy himself, Bob Ross. Bob Ross grew up in Florida, where he grew fond of wildlife and learned carpentry from his father's woodworking business. From 1961 to 1981, he served as a sergeant in the U.S. Air Force, where he was introduced to the snow-covered mountains and natural wonders of Alaska, and learned oil painting from an art class in Anchorage. Around this time, Bob Ross was introduced to an art program on PBS called The Magic of Oil Painting, hosted by German artist Bill Alexander. Love you, love you, and a hug. Isn't it wonderful? I feel like that. Bill Alexander was a touter of Alla Prima oil painting, or wet on wet. Many artists had pioneered the technique in the past, including the likes of Rembrandt, Claude Monet, and Vincent van Gogh. Traditionally, oil paintings were required to dry completely before any more paint could be added on top. In Alla Prima, fresh paint is added on top of still wet paint, but it must be done very quickly. On the magic of oil painting, Bill Alexander would spend just half an hour to create a landscape painting, and soon he became a household name. See, and we are finished, and a beautiful painting. Thank you for watching me. Bye-bye. In 1981, Bob Ross retired from the Air Force and worked for Bill Alexander's art supply company as a traveling salesman and tutor. As a teacher, he met Annette Kowalski, who led him on an entirely new path altogether. Annette Kowalski invested her life savings in a new company for Bob Ross, but even with additions from Bob Ross and his wife, Jane, the budget was very tight. To save money, Ross gave up his army haircut and sported his famed perm look. After Bill Alexander's magic of oil painting left the airwaves, Ross joined forces with station WIPB of Muncie, Indiana to do a new art program, The Joy of Painting. The Joy of Painting was almost identical in content to the magic of oil painting. Ross even gave credit to Bill Alexander for the painting techniques on the show. Alexander, however, was not very open to Bob Ross taking credit for a technique he pioneered on television himself. He betrayed me. I invented vet on vet. I trained him and he is copying me. What bothers me is not just that he betrayed me, but that he thinks he can do it better. Despite Alexander's criticisms, the joy of painting slowly became a nationwide staple of public television from its premiere in 1983 to its final episode in 1994. Each episode involved Bob Ross using a select group of colors and painting tools to create a landscape oil painting in front of his TV audience. While painting, Bob would tell viewers exactly how to perform the painting techniques he uses and would regularly tell stories and bring up a few of his animal friends. 
It was a simple premise for a TV show, but the planning for each episode was anything but simple. The show, again, was performed on a shoestring budget, so Bob Ross worked on the show free of charge. He received enough income from his art company anyway. The main painting for each episode had to be painted in triplicate, once for the main title, then the one painted on the show, and finally a more detailed version for his art lesson books. All three paintings were then either kept by Bob Ross Incorporated or donated. Sometimes guests would appear on the program, including Native American artist Dana Jester and Bob's son Steve Ross, who happened to be a certified instructor with Bob Ross Incorporated. And there was even more to the show than painting. Bob Ross was a huge lover of nature and animals and liked to nurse hurt animals back to health. Many of these animals would make appearances on film segments for the program. Over its 11 years on PBS, The Joy of Painting garnered three Emmy Awards, and Ross made appearances on other programs, including Bill Nye the Science Guy, The Grand Ole Opry, a few TV talk shows, and a couple of MTV commercials. However, in his later years, Ross was diagnosed with lymphoma. After many years of fighting the disease secretly, Bob Ross died in 1995, aged just 52. So that's it. Bob Ross is gone, his show is a rerun on PBS, just another obscure how-to show. And then came 2010's internet culture. It's an undeniable fact that Bob Ross had a soothing effect with his soft voice and kind personality. He was parodied on television, and as kids who originally saw his program became young adults, Bob Ross's posthumous fame began to grow. In 2015, video streaming service Twitch began showing every episode of The Joy of Painting, and Netflix added a few episodes to its own catalog of shows. And let's not forget all of the happy little memes that are currently floating through the internet out there. It really is amazing how one's fame increases after death. Just like with Vincent van Gogh, Bob Ross learned techniques from oil painting masters and perfected his own techniques to create his own distinct style of art. Does it get annoying how much he's displayed in pop culture? Possibly, but through the joy of painting and his oil painting workshops, Bob Ross taught millions of prospective artists to express themselves through paint and canvas. Uh, speaking of which, uh, are you finished already? Well, let's see it. Ah, well, um, hmm. not much to say, but um, time for the PBS Spotlight. <laughs> okay. Ugh. So again, we've been going all over the U.S. with these PBS stations, and now it's time to draw a new one out of the pretty straw hat. So, let's see what we get. And we're going into Colorado with Rocky Mountain PBS. Rocky Mountain PBS began as KRMA TV in 1956, broadcasting out of Denver. Originally an NET member station, it joined PBS in 1970. In 1987, Denver Public Schools sold the station to Channel 6 Incorporated, and several new transmitters were constructed across Colorado and the Rocky Mountains to reach areas devoid of a PBS station. In 1997, the network was branded as Rocky Mountain PBS, and it currently serves the state of Colorado and portions of Wyoming, Kansas, Nebraska, and Utah. The station produces multiple local programs and documentaries, including Colorado Experience and Urban Res. If you're in Colorado, you can watch Rocky Mountain PBS on the following stations, with PBS Kids on the Dot 2 channel and Create and World on the Dot 3 channel. Well, thank you again to everyone for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, feel free to like, subscribe, and share, follow on Twitter, leave a comment below, and also don't forget to support your local PBS stations. So more programming related to the one we just covered can find a good home on public television. So until next time, I'm Captain Rutledge. Good day. I'd like to wish each and every one of you happy painting, 
God bless, and we'll see you soon.